So uh, we had discussed till Zutuddin, even though I want to mention one point that is very important. So the Shams, I forgot to mention the main ayah, which is the Jawab al Qasim, the ayah that's. There's always a custom, I swear, I swear, I swear by this, I swear by this, and then the answer to what's being sworn by. It's the shams, wa shamsi wa duha, wa al qabari idha talaha, wa nahari idha jallaha, wa layli idha yakshaha, wa samai wa ma banaha, wa al-ardi wa ma tahaha, wa nafsi wa ma sawaha, fa alhamaha fujuraha wa taqwaha. This is the central ayah. And man has been endued with the ability to have taqwa, to restrain himself from doing something wrong. And also being a re rebel, you know, to be a rebel, re to be rebellious. Anyway, that was as far as that's concerned. And then, uh, just uh, as a wrap up, I need to say from Sultan Mulk to Sultan Nas, as you know, this group, this particular group, the function of this group is particularly to do anzar, to warn you about the day of judgment. So, very strong imagery is being given so it becomes imprinted in your mind. Uh, so, anyway, uh, starting with um, after Sultan Din, which I said, the purpose of Sutta Teen, and by the way, Sutta Teen, Sutta al Alat, Sutta Qadr, and Sutta Al Bayyina, they have a common theme, which is the Book of Allah. Okay? Wa Tini wa Zaytuni wa Tuni Sinina wa Hadhal Balad al Amin, these are the three places where the books of Allah were revealed. Iqra Bismi Rabbika Ladi Khalaq, the next surah, which has to do with Quran. Inna Anzalna Hu Fi Laylat al Qadr, which is the next surah after that. Then, Lam Yakun il Ladina Kafaru min Ahl al Kitabi wa Mushikina Mun Fakina Hatta Ta'ti Ahu Mul Bayyina, Rasul min Allah Yatlu Suhuba Mutahara. So these four surahs, their common theme is the Qur'an. Now, Sutul Alaq, you know, uh, it's, it's a very long surah, but, uh, I mean, in terms of its content, it's very long. Of course, we know this is the first surah revealed to the Prophet So, on the one side, it's read, and on the other side is, No man thinks he is free. He doesn't need anything. I'm good enough. I'm wonderful. But the reality is he's going, going, going to go back to Allah. Then after that, the example of Abu Jahl is given, which I'm not going to go over. But there's another interesting ayah in Surah Al-Alaq that I want to share with you, where Allah says, That where will we grab him from is his four. The lying, I mean making mistakes, making the wrong judgments. And you know which part of the brain where it is where the uh, where we make our decisions? It's in the forefront. It's the part in the forefront where we do sujood. This is the, the the forehead where we make our logic, huh? The frontal lobe where we make our decisions. So Allah is saying nasiyatin nasiya the front this this part nasiyatin kadibatin lying kadib means lying nasiyatin kadibatin khatiya fadiyatu nadiya and then it continues from there. Then after this, of course, tul alat is uh, the uh, next surah is Inna Anzalnahu Fi Laylat Al-Qadr which is of course related to Quran. So the Bayana is very interesting for many reasons but I'll point out one. Allah makes it very clear and this is very interesting. Allah says لَمْ يَكُنِ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ أَحْلِ الْكِتَابِ وَالْمُشْرِكِينَ مُنْفَكِينَ حَتَّى تَأْتِيَهُمُ الْبَيَّنَ Allah did not expect anyone to believe until clear signs came to them. Until Bayana came, they were not expected to believe. Nor the people of the book, nor the mushrikeen. No one was expected to believe until Allah, Allah knew as a fact that they know in their hearts that this is the truth. So, لَمْ يَكُنِ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ أَحْلِ الْكِتَابِ وَالْمُشْرِكِينَ مُنْفَقِينَ حَتَّى This haruf shartiya. حَتَّى until حَتَّى تَأْتِيَهُمُ الْبَيِّنَةِ And when that happened, رَسُولٌ مِنَ اللَّهِ يَتْلُوا صُرْفًا مُتَحَرَى A messenger from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who read to them from purified pages. Pages that brought light into the people's heart, enlightened them, and they either chose to accept that enlightenment or chose to reject that enlightenment. Rasulun min Allah yatlu suhuf al-mutahara fiha kutubun qayyima In these, this book are, are laws that need to be established or need to be put upright. Then the ayat, after this it continues. Uh, one thing that I usually like to share is about the hellfire. This is not always true in Quran, but in certain places it certainly is true. And that is that the word abada is not used with the hellfire when it's contrasted with Jannah. For example, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ وَالْمُشْرِكِينَ فِي نَارِ جَهَنَّمَ خَالِدِينَ فِي فِيهَا That's it. Not forever. But they will remain therein. أُولَئِكَ هُمْ شَرُّ الْبَرِيَةِ Then when it talks about Jannah, جَزَاؤُهُمْ جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِيَ الْأَنْهَارِ Then, خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا أَبَدًا They will remain in there forever. And my opinion, my personal opinion is with Imam Ibn Taymiyyah on this issue, 
And it is so interesting because you have Imam Ibn Taymiyyah and Ibn al-Arabi. These are like two opposites in the Muslim world. Ibn al-Arabi, the mystic, the Sufi, and Ibn, Ibn Taymiyyah, the, you know, the, uh, the person who follows the, strictly the Quran and Sunnah, no mystical interpretation. They both agree that Jannah, er, er, Imam Ibn Taymiyyah says, and this, my opinion is more with him than, than, uh, than Ibn al-Arabi, which is that hell will come to an end. People that had no iman, they have no weight. After they pay for their crimes, they will go back into non-existence. Just as there were non-existence before coming into this world, non-Muslims will go, meaning the people who had no iman whatsoever, that have no hope, they will go into non-existence. The hadith in Sahih Bukhari where Allah will put his feet over the hell fire, showing that hell fire will most likely come to an end. But again, the consensus, the ijma, and I want to be clear, this is the opinion of one scholar, and many people agree with him, many scholars agree with him, but it is not a majority opinion because of the wordings of the Prophet, Narun Abadun wa Jannatun Abadun, Hellfire forever or Jannah forever. That is the majority opinion. However, one opinion can be majority, and sometimes this happens a lot in, 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 in Tafsir, particularly where one opinion is the majority and the other opinion seems to be stronger. Oh, here. Uh, and and if you are only place. this ayah. No, this not, not only this ayah. Ma many ayahs, but many times it comes also Khalidina. Yeah, Khalidina. Okay. And I have an explanation of that too, but that's going to take too long. But, so the, then after that, four surahs come. Surah Al-Zinzal, Surah Al-Adiyat, Surah Al-Qari'ah, and Surah Al-Takathur. Two and two. These two can be paired in either one of these four are connected. And so two surahs talk about the day of judgment, which is Surah Al-Zinzal, Ida Zulzilat al ardu Zinzal. And then Al-Qariyatum al qariya wa Ma'adraqa al qariya The common theme between them is they both talk about the weight of your actions. Over there it's Wa man ya'mal mithqala dharratin khayran yara, wa man ya'mal mithqala dharratin sharran yara. Over there is Fa'amma man... فَأَمَّا مَنْ ثَقُلُتْ مَوَازِينُهُ فَهُوَ فِي عِيشَةٍ رَاضِيَةٍ وَأَمَّا مَنْ ثَقُلَتْ مَوَازِينُهُ فَأُمُّهُ هَاوِيَ وَمَا دَرَاكَ مَا هِيَ So the weighing of the action is mentioned. And Ibn Abbas, when he mentioned the most comprehensive ayah of the entire... Now you know Ibn Abbas, he's Khibrul Ummah, the father of Tafsir, so to say. He said the most comprehensive ayah of the entire Qur'an is this... He considers this to be the most uh, comprehensive verse of the Quran. Whoever does even an Adam's weight of good will see it. Whoever does an Adam's weight of evil will see it. Then after Surah Al-Zinzal is Surah Al-Adiyat. Surah Al-Adiyat is very interesting. It talks about the nature of man. Both these surahs, Surah Al-Takathur and Adiyat, they talk about wealth. And over there Allah gives an example of the horse. The horse that you put in harm's way, you know, as they say, in harm's way, when you're in the battlefield and the horse is listening and obeying to you, you know, he's obeying you, he runs into the, the battlefield, even if you're, whatever you're telling him, he's doing, right? And then Allah says, look at this, this, this domestic animal listens to you. He puts himself in harm's way. And then look at your attitude towards me. Look at your attitude towards me. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لِرَبِّهِ لَكَانُونَ and then, وَإِنَّهُ عَلَىٰ ذَٰلِكَ لَشَهِيدٌ And he is a witness to his own actions. وَإِنَّهُ لِحُبِّ الْخَيْرِ لَشَدِيدٌ Over here, خَيْرِ means wealth. In, وَإِنَّهُ لِحُبِّ الْخَيْرِ لَشَدِيدٌ And then his love for wealth is so amazing, so, so powerful. Right? And then after that, the, the subject of the Day of Judgment continues. Over here, in, so in Surah Al-Zilzal, Surah Al-Adiyah, Surah Al-Qariyah, Al-Qariyah, Tum Al-Qariyah, and then after that, Surah Al-Takathur. Al-Takathur, ever again, Al-Hakum Al-Takathur, in your struggle for more and more and more, Hatta Azurtum Al-Maqabir, until you reach your graves. That's the, that's one line story of every person, right? So, Al-Hakum Al-Takathur, Hatta Azurtum Al-Maqabir, Kalla Sofa Ta'alamun. This surah is very interesting because it also talks about levels of knowing. Kalla Sofa Ta'alamun, one is to know, just you know, you intellectually know. But then is knowing ilm al like you, like as if you have knowledge of certain, you have certainty, right? And then the third level is to be able to see ayn al right? And there's a fourth level, it mentioned another part of the Quran, haq al But it's one thing to know about the North Pole, I intellectually know about it. But if I've seen the North Pole, then I know it really exists. If I live, have lived in the North Pole, or have, have learned about the North Pole, I have an emotional attachment. And if I actually live in the North Pole, then it's like Hakul Yaqeen, right? So, 
So anyway, sometimes a castle. After that is probably, in terms of guidance, the most comprehensive surah of the Quran, which is Qulasr. Unless you get a D minus in all four aspects. Iman, Amal al-Salih, Tawasul bil-Haq, Tawasul bil You have to get D minus, otherwise you're a loser, according to the Quran. The whole prim you can say just like Surah Al-Ikhlas, Surah Al-Ikhlas, Surah Al-Ikhlas is the seed of Tawheed. All the ayahs of Tawheed, oneness of Allah, grow out of Surah Al-Ikhlas. In the same way, all of the ayahs of guidance, not Sharia, guidance, grow out of Surah Al-Asr. The twin Surah of Surah Al-Asr can also be Surah al -Din, by the way. Anyway, then the, uh, for, so uh, Surah Al-Asr is also connected with uh, the surah before and after, but it's a over here, after, because those people who uh, uh, over there it's time is running out. Ma'asirat is that which is about to come down any second from the clouds. So time is running out any second, time is going to run out. This is the essence of walasr. There are many words in Quran for time, dahar, sa'a, so on and so forth. Now, uh, then, he thinks his wealth will stay with him forever. So that's the because he, then there's then he's not worried about time, right? He thinks it's going to be forever. So the opposite of time is there. Then after that, Sutul Fil and Sutul uh, uh, Quraysh. I won't say much about this except these are specific surahs about the Quraysh. Now, what's very interesting about Quraysh, Sutul Quraysh, Allah mentions two things about this nation, two qualities that are very important for any nation's success, which they had. Right? They had so many favors of Allah. Even when they were being attacked, Allah helped them. Then in their trade and their business, they were, they were desert. They were nothing. And then Allah, because of the situation between the Persian Empire and the Roman Empire, they had to go through this place and they became like the, the middle, they, got, they, they became the collectors for both sides for, 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 for wealth. So, so Allah says, فَلْيَعْبُدُوا رَبَّ هَذَا الْبَيْتِ أَلَّذِي أَتْعَامَهُمْ مِنْ جُوَعَ Who fed them from starvation. So any country that grows its own food, right, that can feed its own people, and the sense of security. When you take a nation and try, try to destroy your own sense of security, what does that do to investments, which is the beginning? People are not going to invest someplace that doesn't have security. You have to have stability and security for people to invest. So these two things, to be able to grow your own food, 